In the consumer space, there are two major types of processor, the x86, which is primarily in laptops and desktops, or ARM primarily in mobile devices and embedded. But the $64,000 question is, will ARM transition to the desktop after dominating the mobile and embedded space and displace the current king, x86? History of x86. Just how did the x86 processor become the de facto standard in desktops and laptops for the last 30-ish years? It all comes down to a very simple decision made by I IBM in 1981. Intel's 8086 processor was chosen as the brains for IBM's new IBM PC. Well before the desktop computing explosion of the 80s, computers were based around the idea of a mainframe. The advancement of the desktop space led to many competing PCs at the time, such as the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64, the Amiga, the BBC Micro, but the IBM PC outsold a lot massively, displacing other systems at the time. How does x86 work? Well, x86 is a CISC-based processor. CISC stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. Instructions can take multiple clock cycles to complete, but more instructions can be embedded per clock cycle. Speed in RISC comes from its the way it uses its instruction set. Unfortunately, on a CISC-based processor, there are more transistors, so more wattage is consumed and a higher heat output as well. History of ARM. ARM stands for Advanced Risk Machine. ARM was founded in the UK in Cambridge in 1984, and the first actual ARM processor itself was used in a spin-off from the BBC Micro. Unlike Intel and AMD, who both design and manufacture the chips, ARM only actually licenses out their designs to hardware partners, who then tailor what the chip needs to do for their needs. Uh, coincidentally, a nice bit of trivia, the first ARM chip on a phone was in the Nokia 6110. How does it work? ARM is a risk based architecture. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. Used heavily in, in mobile and embedded applications due to less power draw and less heat generated. Unlike x86, it only completes one instruction and one operation per clock cycle. Well, here is the nuts and bolts of the argument. Now we know a little bit about the history of the two differing architectures and how they operate. Now how do they compare? I could talk about how many teraflops each can compete and bombard you with numbers, but on the whole, I'm not going to do that. What is better is to run through a list of general computing and specialized computing and see which architecture is better at what and award points to see who won. Web browsing. To most people, this is what a computer is used for and this is where mobile devices excel. As of 2014, Accessing the web was more common via a mobile device than on a desktop or laptop PC. Also, a lot of websites are now starting to tailor their content for the smaller screen real estate on a mobile device. Point for ARM. Gaming. This is where x86 excels. The two biggest consoles on the market, the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, are x64 based along with a very large PC gaming community. x86 has also had many additions to help with video processing along these lines, such as the MMX extensions and PCIe tying directly into the processor. While there have been some great advancements being made on the Mali GPU on board ARM chips, and the phenomenon of Angry Birds and Candy Crush are nothing to sneeze at, it's a long way of what's being able to be achieved with x86 point for x86. Virtualization. This is another area where x86 excels. Most virtualization software is already running on x86 and highly tailored to the x86 architecture. In addition, Intel have actually tailored some of their processors themselves to be even more favorable to virtualization. Virtualization can be done on ARM right now, but the software itself is lacking. Point to x86. Thermals and energy consumption. This is ARM through and through. Going from the base up to draw as little power as possible. And less power draw is less heat. 
XH6, on the other hand, is very, very hot and the aftermarket for coolers is quite extensive. Point to ARM. Multimedia. A very close battle here. Both are more than capable of providing a full HD or above multimedia experience. Sound and video editing is easier on SX6 due to the fact of higher software support through tools like Pro Tools and Avid's Media Composer software. On the other hand, we've all got a ARM device in our pockets to consume music. Office productivity. Again, this is a very close race. More and more computing is being done on smartphones and tablets while on the move. While the traditional desk setup will be here for a while yet, along with the possibility of more and more office work moving towards the cloud, I'd say at this point in time, it's tied for both. Scores are tied. As you can see, each architecture has got its own uses and areas in which they excel. Usage for each is defined by what you want to achieve with the processor. The future. What I see happening for the future is a hybridization of laptop and, ta and tablet spaces. Arguably, this is already happening with devices such as the MS Surface, uh, the way some laptops fold over and allow the screen to be used as a tablet, Windows 10 being the same across both x86 and ARM, and the previously mentioned Office apps and so forth running fully well on ARM. Also, there is the recently announced Ubuntu tablet, which can double as a PC once you connect a monitor and a keyboard to it. There is one avenue that may displace x86 as the king of the desktop, and that is GP GPUs. But that in itself is its own video. x86 has become what people think about when they think about computers. Virtualization is a lot easier on x86 than ARM. We also need to think about legacy. x86 has been a standard on the desktop since the days of the IBM compatible. And 